Has anyone ever wondered how many plants there are in the whole Plants vs. Zombies franchise? Well, apparently not, because googling this question just leads you to a Reddit post about Plants vs. Zombies 3. Given the popularity of the franchise, surely there's some kind of answer out there somewhere. Well, that could not be further from the truth, because it gets exponentially more complicated the further you look into the games themselves. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing for this video. I'm going to be attempting to present the most comprehensive answer to this question, going into as much detail across the whole franchises I can, including the most obscure, unknown, and straight up bizarre games and characters. And before we get started, a huge shout out to the people who run the Plants vs Zombies wiki as it was the most comprehensive source for a lot of the information and research in this video. As you'll soon find out, we're going to be looking at some extremely obscure stuff that I would have never known existed if it weren't for the wiki. Anyway, let's go. So the first thing we have to do to answer this question is define what exactly is meant by plants. This may sound absurd, but it's actually a highly crucial and decisive component of the question. This is because there's actually a sizable difference between what the game calls plants, or infers to be plants, and what characters are actually plant species in a real world sense. The first and most obvious interpretation would be a plant is a non-human character in the game that's part of the plant side. I'm going to be calling this the plant character interpretation, and that's what we're going to be using for this video. In Plants vs Zombies 1, there are 5 worlds with 8 characters each, plus the 8 upgrade plants in Imitator. This brings the total to 49. So that's it for the first game, right? Wrong. I wasn't lying when I said we're going to be going very deep for this video. There are three more plant characters that are primarily exclusive to the puzzle and minigame modes. These are the Explodonaut from Walnut Bowling, Giant Walnut from Walnut Bowling 2, and the Backwards Repeater from Vasebreaker. You could make the case that these are just variations of existing characters, and that could be right, especially for Backwards Repeater, but all of them have a unique function and a distinguishable appearance, even if it's just a rotated or upside set of sprites. This is a good time to define what the term character even means. Dictionary.com defines character as the aggregate of features and traits that form the individual nature of some person or thing. I know this is in reference to character as the quality of an individual rather than the fictional media sense of a character which would be more relevant here, but the qualities that build such a character are evident in this definition. In order for a plant to be a distinct character, it needs to have some features, aesthetic or functional, that make them individual or unique from all the other characters. Sure, Backwards Repeater may just be a repeater flipped horizontally in Photoshop, but the fact that it faces backwards is a trait that makes it both functionally and visually distinct from the regular repeater. From now on, I'll be considering a plant a new character if it meets at least two of the following criteria. It has a unique name, it has at least one significant unique functional trait, and it has at least one significant unique visual feature that all separate the character from an existing character or real world plant. Also, it's a given that it has to be on the plant side and non-human, so characters like Crazy Dave and his family won't count. And neither will any of the zombies either, obviously. This is the criteria we'll be using for the rest of the video, but there may be some slight exceptions on a case-by-case -case basis. But for the most part, these rules will be set in stone. Under this definition, all three of these characters count towards our total, which now sits at 52. Now, let's look at some of the more obscure characters from this game. Is this a character? You could make the argument that no, it's just a normal ass tree, and I mean, you're not wrong. If we call a tree of wisdom a plant character, why can't we call this tree here on the title screen a character, or screw it, why isn't the grass on a lawn a plant character? Well, the tree of wisdom may look like a regular old tree visually, but functionally it has a big trait that carves out its own character from the other trees. Its ability to commit credit card fraud. Oh, and it can talk too. I don't know how this thing can talk since it has no mouth. Maybe Crazy Dave spiked your drink with some magic hypno shrooms or something, but it does talk. It also has a unique name, the Tree of Wisdom. So this meets our criteria for a plant character and is enough to distinguish it from every other non-character tree. So to answer my own question, no, Tree McTree face on the title screen isn't its own character, unfortunately. We also have to talk about the sprout from the Zen Garden. Sprout does meet the criteria for a new plant character, even though it's essentially a baby marigold. It has a unique name, Sprout, it looks different visually to a grown marigold, and it has unique functionality since it doesn't produce coins, but rather grows into a marigold. You could make the case that the marigold and Sprout are the same character, but I'm gonna count it because even if you don't count it now, it will count in the next game anyway. Also, what the hell is up with those prices, Crazy Dave? 
I know the cost of living and inflation are high right now, but you don't have to take the piss. In fact, is Crazy Dave even paying taxes on this stuff? I highly doubt it because he only accepts cash and he's running the whole thing out of his boot. Crazy Dave's Twitty Dinkies should seriously be investigated by the government or something. Anyway, I got a bit sidetracked there. I'm not going to be counting all the colors of Marigold and the Zen Garden as individual characters since they only meet one of the criteria for a new character, the visual difference. And that just about wraps things up for Plants vs Zombies. Oh, wait a second. There's one more plant we need to talk about. In the Air Raid minigame, which is exclusive to the DS version, you play as a Gatling P or 3 Peter sitting in a flower pot aircraft. I don't think this thing has a name because nobody in the history of mankind has ever had to refer to it, but that's what I'm going to call it. The flower pot aircraft has unique visuals and unique functionality to the regular flower pot, so it does meet enough criteria to be considered a new character. In the Air Raid minigame, you can also upgrade the flower pot plane with a pumpkin, but as far as I can tell, this is practically just the same thing but with a pumpkin placed on top. Calling this its own character would be like saying pea shooter in a pumpkin is its own plant. With that said, we're finally done with the original Plants vs Zombies. Believe it or not, the next games we need to talk about get a lot more complex. As for Plants vs Zombies 2, we have 44 new world plants that weren't from Plants vs Zombies 1. In addition, there are 17 new premiums, 11 new gemiums, 13 new mint plants, and a whopping 72 new sediums. In case you're wondering, yes, there are actually 14 power mints, but alignment is the only one unlocked by seed packets instead of mints, so I included it in the sedium count instead. For the sediums, there was one mild issue, which was Mega Gatling P. Some people would include it as a regular Gatling P, but I see no reason to, since they're named differently, function differently, and look different. This doesn't just meet our criteria for a new character, but exceeds it. As for some of the more obscure plants, we have a few to discuss. Firstly, we have the Travel Log. This is a similar case to the Tree of Wisdom, it's basically just a normal log, except it has its own name, functions as a quest NPC, and it has swag, so it counts. The Penny's Pursuit exclusive Security Gourds also count, bringing our total of new characters in this game to 159. However, there's one big aspect of this game we have to talk about, plant food. What's stopping us from calling any of the plant food versions of plants their own characters? Let's take Torchwood's plant food ability for example. It may not have a unique name, but it differs functionally and aesthetically from the original Torchwood, which meets our criteria for a new character. Clearly this is just the same character though, it's just a powered up version. There are countless examples of this in game, including most of the walnuts, cactus, moonflower, hell, even pea shooter since while its plant food ability is active, it looks and acts differently to the original pea shooter character. However, this phenomenon isn't exclusive to plant food. There are a bunch of plants that have different forms based on whether they're at full health, damaged, power up by shadow plants, and so on. For all these reasons, I'm making the first amendment to the rules. Plants that are strictly a result of plant food, powered up states, charged up states, or damaged states all do not constitute new characters. This new rule makes for a few potential characters that are pretty vague and indecisive, so I'll explain whether they'll count on a case-by-case -case basis. Holy Barrier's Leaf could be considered a new plant, but remember at the start of the video when I said that a new character has to be significantly unique visually? Well, Holy Barrier's leaves are undoubtedly meant to be from the Holy Berries present in the main plant. For the same reason, Bowling Bulbs projectiles, Starburst projectiles, Grape Shots projectiles, Guacadal's mobile form, Tiger Grass's mobile forms, and Parsnip's mobile form all don't count as new characters, as they're clearly one-for-one -one fragments of the original plant, just split apart from the rest, or in the case of Guacadal and Parsnip, the whole plant just goes into motion. The Tofu Turkey spawned by Turkey Pool is also just a one-for-one -one continuation of the main plant, as it's present in Turkey Pool's plant sprites. You could make the argument that the Tofu Turkey isn't part of the Turkey Pool plant, and the Turkey Pool plant is simply lobbing Tofu Turkeys, but strictly abiding by our criteria, Here's a picture of Turkey Pool, and here's a picture of the Tofu Turkey. The Tofu Turkey is not visually unique at all, as it's entirely present in a Turkey Pool plant. Even if you wanted to go the other way around and say Tofu Turkey is a new character because it has its own name on top of its unique functionality, that's still incorrect because the Tofu Turkey is never formally referred to as Tofu Turkey. Whenever the Almanac references the Tofu Turkey, it's all in lower case and not capitalized like all names should be as nouns. This is the same with the Grass Tiger and the Tiger Grass Plant. However, for the baby versions of Dragon Brute and Guard Shroom, the game actually does refer to them with their own distinct capitalized names. The baby dragon brutes are called baby brutes by Penny, and the baby guard shrooms are called mini shrooms in the almanac. 
So even though you could argue the baby brutes and mini shrooms aren't visually distinct from their adult counterparts, they still satisfy the other two criteria for a new character, which is enough to pass them. The Plants vs Zombies wiki seems to agree with me on this one as it includes these two as plant characters and omits all the other plants we've proven to be invalid. On the other hand, the Bomegranate seeds left after the Bomegranate is used do count as a new character. These are both visually and functionally unique from the Bomegranate plant and normal Pomegranate seeds, so they do count. The Zomboids spawned from Zoybean Pod without plant food all count as new characters as well. These are the Lettuce Head, Carrot Head, and Melon Head Zomboids. The reason why these count as new characters and not hypnotized zombies is because zombies are essentially infected humans. At the beginning of the video I established that only non-human characters count to the total. The Zomboids aren't zombies, but rather vegan recreations of zombies crafted by the Zoybean pod. Boom Balloon Flowers balloons don't count as characters, as in terms of naming and aesthetics, they're identical to ordinary real-world balloons. With all those borderline character cases analyzed, we're done with Plants vs Zombies 2, with a total of 164 new plant characters. Keep in mind, this game does update really often, so this number will definitely change in the future, but the point of this video is to count the plants as of the present. At the time of writing the script, the most recent plant added to the game is Blast Spinner, which I'm sure will change by the time I get this video out because I've been rewriting and writing the script for months now. Yeah, in case you were wondering, in this relatively long period of little to no videos, I wasn't out getting the milk. I was actually spending hours upon hours researching about how many characters there are in a fictional children's game where some mentally ill man tells you to plant anthropomorphic plants to fight off a hypothetical outbreak of zombies with half their pants missing. Speaking of games where a mentally ill man tells you to plant anthropomorphic plants to fight off a hypothetical outbreak of zombies with half their pants missing, let's move on to Plants vs Zombies 3. Plants vs Zombies 3 features a measly 4 new characters, those being Bamboo Shoots, Lychee, Grapes of Wrath, and Silver Sword. Despite its visual similarity to Endurian, Lychee has a different name and functions differently. I'll also be counting Silver Sword, since it was a character at one point, but has since been removed. This also applies to all of the removed plants from the early 2020 versions of the game, which we'll get to later, since it was basically a whole different game. Such a low amount of new characters is kinda sad, since this game has been in development limbo for years now in its current landscape form. At least they started making some good changes, such as the Choose Your Seeds feature, which honestly should have been there from the very beginning. With the change from 2D tower defense to 3D shooter, Garden Warfare brought some major stylistic changes to the visuals of existing characters which obviously causes some big problems in the context of this video. Is this pea shooter the same character as this pea shooter? It's obvious that the Garden Warfare pea shooter functions differently to the tower defense pea shooter since it can move around, jump, deal splash damage, and use three new abilities, none of which the tower defense pea shooter could do. Since these two pea shooters have the same name, this question all comes down to whether you consider the Garden Warfare pea shooter to be significantly different visually to the tower defense pea shooter. Personally, I'm going to say no. The only reason the Garden Warfare pea shooter looks different to the tower defense pea shooter is because of the game around it, not any changes to the character itself. Obviously, pea shooter needed a new coat of paint in a semi-realistic shooter game and the extent of its visual changes don't really stray too far from that purpose. All they added to the character was some more realism and detail, leaving the core visual structure of the plant essentially unchanged. It's not like they changed its color or gave it three eyes or something, it's still at its core the same pea shooter character in terms of naming and visuals. Everything I just explained also applies to three other base variants in the game, Chompa, Sunflower, and Cactus. All these plants remain visually identical to their tower defense forms, apart from their stylistic appropriations to the shooter genre, and retain the exact same names. For the record, the Plants vs Zombies wiki agrees with me here. All the variants for Chomper, Cactus, and Sunflower are new characters, taking the total for this game to 23. However, the pea shooter variants are a bit more tricky. And by tricky, I mean needlessly stupid. First, we have Fire Pea. Obviously, this is the same character as Fire Pea Shooter from Plants vs Zombies 2 but that one's called Fire Pea Shooter, not Fire Pea. Since this is just an abbreviated version of the same name, I'm letting it slide. These are the same character beyond any reasonable doubt. But now they're just messing with me. Ice Goddamn Pea. Not Snow Pea, Ice Pea. The thing that irritates me about this name is that it ruins the whole pun and double meaning of the name. 
So was Ice P just too good to have a light-hearted silly name? Is Garden Warfare just that serious as a shooter that the naming conventions can't have any silliness or jokes to them? That would make no sense at all considering the tagline of the game was shooters just got weird. I'm gonna count Ice P as the same character as Snow P even if I'm making an exception against my own rules. Since Ice P looks identical to Snow P and its difference in functionality from the base P shooter is exactly the same as the difference between Snow P and the tower defense P shooter. Since both of these plants function as P shooters that chill zombies, I think it's fair to say they don't significantly differ from each other functionality wise. Also for the record, even though Ice P can fully freeze zombies and Plants vs Zombies 1 Snow P can't, this was actually an ability given to Snow P in Plants vs Zombies 2. With all that said, our Garden Warfare new character count sits at 29. Also, for what it matters, the wiki agrees with me on Ice P and Fire P as well. But we're far from done with Garden Warfare because we still gotta discuss the potted plant abilities and some other random obscure characters. Sombrero Bean Bomb, Heal Flower, Dark Flower, Spiky Spikeweed, Chester Spikeweed, Potato Nugget Mine, Garlic Drone, and Artichoke Drone all count as new characters. But Cactus has two other abilities that are a bit more complicated. Toolnut Battlement and Iron Maiden. Toolnut Battlement has its own name, but isn't visually distinct from Toolnut and Walnut, since it's legitimately just a pair of walnuts and toolnuts held together by a single vine. And it isn't functionally distinct from those two characters either in any significant way. So unless you count the vine holding them together as a significant difference in visuals, this isn't a new plan. However, Iron Maiden has its own name and is visually distinct from the Walnut character, and since it isn't created by plant food in this game, unlike Plants vs Zombies 2, it has become its own character. There are also three boss mode abilities which are all super weird. Twin Heal Sunflower uses the Plants vs Zombies 2 Twin Sunflower as its icon, but when played in game, it's a completely new character and obviously looks nothing like a sunflower, but rather, well, a Twin Heal Flower. The Coconut Spotting Station is a pretty clear-cut character, but the Revive Rainbow is a different story. It does have its own name, but visually there's nothing that significantly differentiates it from a regular watering can on top of a regular flower. You could say that the rainbow pouring from it does make it different to a regular watering can visually, but even I've touched enough grass to know that water streams and mist outdoors can cause a mini rainbow effect due to the refraction of all the wavelengths in sunlight. Not gonna lie, it's kinda sad that so far the only time I've used my high school and uni physics knowledge is to help determine whether a watering can sitting on top of a flower is actually a character in a children's game franchise. Also, watering cans can restore dying plants in real life, so there's also no significant difference in functionality between the Revive Rainbow and any old watering can. These 11 abilities take the total for this game to 40, but what about potted plants? Surely these will be easy to categorize. P. Cannon. P. Cannon actually has enough supporting evidence to be its own character, somehow. P. Cannon has its own unique name and visually differs from the regular P. Shooter as it has markings under its eyes, angrier eyebrows, and a different leaf layout on the back of its head. But then the very next plant is... P. Repeater. Kill me now. At first glance it might look like this is its own character too. It has unique visuals, added splash damage for functionality, and its own name. Well, believe it or not, I don't think any of those facts are actually true, or at least significant enough to warrant a new character. While P. Repeater does have the markings under its eyes, its eyebrows and back head leaf arrangement are basically identical to Repeater, unlike the case of P. Cannon where those two aspects were significantly different to the regular P. Shooter. In my opinion, it's more than fair to say that the visual changes between Repeater and P. Repeater aren't significant. The same goes for its functionality. Like I said for P. Cannon, a tiny bit of splash damage is not significant functionally with respect to the character as a whole in my opinion. So P. Repeater only has a unique name. But even that isn't entirely solid evidence, since the game just flat out calls it Repeater in multiple instances, including the kill feed and a sticker book, as well as apparently when you just look at the plant in an actual game like I was doing here. All this means that P. Repeater is the same character as Repeater, while P. Cannon is a new character rather than a duplicative P. Shooter. The Plants vs Zombies wiki agrees with me here once again. I know this video is getting confusing, but hang in there. Apart from that, all of the potted plants are plants we've already seen, except for Bamboo Shoot and Goop Shrew. Bamboo Shoot looks and functions very differently to the Plants vs Zombies 3 Bamboo Shoots, and it's way more akin to the Plants vs Zombies Adventures Bamboo Shoot. Bamboo Shoot has a different name to the Plants vs Zombies 3 Bamboo Shoots as well, which is in plural form. Ice Pea Shooter. Ice Pea Shooter. 
PopCap Y. Why did you have to make three different names for the same plant? As if writing this video wasn't hard enough with all that P repeater cannon jargon, now we got bloody snow ice P P shooter to deal with. Thankfully, this plant is pretty easy to identify as the same as the other two pea shooters of the freezing temperature variety. Not only does it look visually identical to Snow Pea, but its sticker book description actually references its almanac entry from the original Plants vs Zombies. Yes, we have Plants vs Zombies lore and intertextuality before GTA 6. Ice Pea Shooter is just an elongated version of the Ice Pea name as well, which we already established as the same character as Snow Pea. I know it's really weird and confusing that all three of these plants are the same character, which implies that two separate plants in the same game are the same character, but other solutions to this dilemma would be even more convoluted and I don't feel like rewriting this part of the script a third time. With Pea Cannon, Goop Shroom, and Bamboo Shoot all included as new characters, we now sit at a total of 43 new characters. But what about these guys? There are four costumed variants of other potted plants in Garden Warfare. These are the Franken Shroom, Furry Snapdragon, Furry Doom Shroom, and Snow Shroom. Not gonna lie, these are all adorable, but they really missed an opportunity calling Franken Shroom Scary Shroom instead of Scary Shroom. All four of these guys have unique names and visuals, which is enough to call them new characters. You might argue that if we call these new characters, what about the hundreds of costumes in Plants vs Zombies 2? Well, the costumes in Plants vs Zombies 2 are a fair bit different. Instead of being whole new plants, the Plants vs Zombies 2 costumes are simply accessories that you select from a menu to give to your plants before taking them into levels. For example, you don't plant Sombrero Grave Busters, they're just Grave Busters with a Sombrero cosmetic selected. There's no name or almanac entry for the Grave Buster with a Sombrero hat, it's just a Grave Buster with one cosmetic addition. So basically, some plants wearing hats are new characters and some plants wearing hats aren't new characters. Pretty easy to understand, right? Anyway, the point I've been leading to is that all four of these seasonal costume variants in Garden Warfare are new characters because they don't just have unique visuals, but they also have unique names with sticker book entries to back them up. While the Plants vs Zombies 2 costumes only have unique visuals and no unique names as well as the fact that you can't bring them into levels of specific characters like you can with the costume Garden Warfare potted plants. Even if you still don't believe me, Snow Shroom's sticker book entry even calls it Ice Shroom's long lost cousin, meaning that Ice Shroom and Snow Shroom are canonically different characters. But for the sake of my sanity, don't bother reading the other sticker book descriptions, they're not that important. We currently sit at 47 new characters in this game, but we have to make some final additions to this count, which are NPC characters found in various maps of the game. The only plants in this category that constitute new characters are Mega Flower, Tactical Cuke, and Flax Cannon. But there are a couple of others that don't count, but I thought I'd mention them anyway just because of how ridiculously they're named. If I asked you what this plant is called, you'd probably say Walnut, but nope. In Garden Warfare, these are called Tall Nuts, not to be confused with the existing Tall Nuts in the Tower Defense games. And Tall Nut Cannon is actually Coconut Cannon, but fires Tall Nuts, which are actually Walnuts named after Tall Nut. I swear PopCap just did all of this to make life hell for whichever poor YouTuber would attempt to make a video like this a decade later. Toolnut doesn't count as a new character since it doesn't significantly differ in aesthetics or functionality from the Walnuts in the first game, as seen in the Walnut bowling levels. And Toolnut Cannon doesn't differ significantly from Coconut Cannon functionally or aesthetically since it's just a Coconut Cannon that shoots coconuts, which are textured like Walnuts and actually called Toolnuts. This whole Walnut Toolnut thing irritates me to no end. Did the Garden Warfare devs just not know that these things are meant to be called walnuts? The map is literally called Walnut Hills, why is it that hard to just call these things walnuts and not tall nuts? Even the Iron Maiden sticker book description calls it a type of tall nut. Then why doesn't it look like this? Who cares about Garden Warfare 3? We should all be asking PopCap for an explanation about the Garden Warfare Walnut Tall Nut dilemma instead. Anyway, rant aside, we're finally finished with Garden Warfare, rounding out to a nice and even 50 new characters. Even if you thought we went deep for this one, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Let's just get right into this game, since it'll be a similar process to Garden Warfare 1. For the original classes, there are 10 new variants, and no, Electro P isn't the same as Electric P Shooter from the Tower Defense games. As well as 18 new variants in the new classes. I did choose to include Citron as a new character, since unlike all of the Tower Defense inspired classes from Garden Warfare 1, Citron was completely revamped visually in this game, bearing little to no resemblance to the previous Citron character, apart from the name and the fact that they're both futuristic oranges to some extent. 
functionality wise, it's also a completely different plan, which didn't matter for the Garden Warfare 1 characters since they had the same visuals and names as their tower defense counterparts. So Citron falls short of being lumped in as a returning character by one criteria point. On the other hand, Torchwood wasn't counted since his visuals weren't very significantly changed beyond appropriating it for the shooter style with limbs and a weapon as well as the fact that it obviously retains the same name. Now there is one more character that's a bit of a stretch, the Junkasaurus. This technically fits our criteria for a new character since it's a new non-human character on the plant side. This is one of the more obvious cases of the plant character interpretation differing largely from our idea of a biological plant, but more on that later. So with 29 new characters so far, let's move on to abilities. These are the Dark Bean Bomb, Rainbow Flower, Vampweed, Red Artichoke, Dark Garlic Drone, Pizzazzling Potato Mine, and King Johnny. Can I just say, it's ridiculous how over half of these abilities are solely for the Cactus class. In fact, Cactus and Chompa have a whopping 10 abilities each, while Rose and Colonel Corn only have 5. The ability distribution in this game is way out of whack. Moving on, we have 13 new mobile spawnable characters, with the last three being an identical case to the Halloween and Feast of Us potted plants from the last game. In fact, we also get a hint of new lore just like we did with Snowshroom, except this time it's for spring and weed. Apparently they hatch from eggs every spring, and I wish I didn't find that out because that can only mean spring and weeds lay eggs. And now you've got that image in your head too. On top of the mobile spawnables, we also have to count 9 more potted plant characters, most of which are just more seasonal variants. In terms of new sticker book lore, we have an unexpectedly disturbing entry from Elf P. All of this brings our total for Garden Warfare 2 up to 58. New to this game were plant bosses, of which 7 are new characters. I was on the fence about Marigold being counted as a new character, but I eventually accepted that it is because it functions very differently to the tower defense counterpart. Even if its core functionality still revolves around laundering money from Crazy Dave's shoddy vehicular tax haven. There are also 6 more NPCs in this game that serve as new characters. These are Agent Citron, Agent Corn, Agent Rose, Assistant Manager Bidey, the Butterhawk plane from that one really good mission, which is the only part of story mode I actually remember, and the Crystal Guardian. The Agent characters look visually identical to their playable counterparts, but function completely differently as components of the game's story, which along with their unique names, make them perfectly valid towards our count. With 71 new characters in Garden Warfare 2, let's move swiftly on to Battle for Neighborville. Next up is everyone's favorite, least favorite Plants vs Zombies shooter. To my knowledge, I've basically never talked about this game on my channel before, so I'll say it now. This game got a tiny bit too much hate. Sure, it's no Garden Warfare level game, but it's still enjoyable in its own right. To some extent. Anyway, let's get on with counting the plants. The only new plant classes are the Acorn and Wildflower, but the Acorn counts as two characters since it comes with the Oak as well. Nightcap won't count since we already counted it in Plants vs Zombies 2. As for ability characters, we have Sap Trap and Super Sap Trap. Yeah, that's it. At first I couldn't even tell if these two abilities were even characters or just regular blobs of sap, since I couldn't for the life of me make out faces on them in game. I know that their icons show them having faces, but if some of the past shooter icons are anything to go by, then they don't have a very flattering track record of actually showing what the plant even is in game. Thankfully Sylvia YSI, who you might also know from the website you're currently procrastinating on right now, helped me out here and sent me the screenshot which proves Saptrap's characterization in all its horrifying glory. Even though it looks more like my sleep paralysis demon than anything resembling an actual plant, Saptrap is added to our count as well as Super Saptrap, totaling to a measly 5 new characters so far. But surely there are a lot of spawnable and potted plants to make up for the lack of characters so far, right? Nope, it's just Terracotta Wildflower. The fact that this game had the audacity to remove variants and not even bother making up for it with any new characters whatsoever is actually kind of crazy. Anyway, the new bosses are Dreadroot, Dreadwood, Bitter Dill, and Blightcap. To round off Battle for Neighborville, we have 34 new plant characters, which could have gone a lot worse if there weren't a bunch of costume characters recycled in this story mode with added names and dialogue. Now it's time for Plants vs Zombies Heroes, which has a lot of cards, but let's start with the heroes themselves. There are 8 new hero characters since Citron and Rose are the same characters from Garden Warfare 2 and Nightcap is the same character from Plants vs Zombies 2. 
Now, as for the cards themselves, we have a bit of a problem. There are three types of cards, plants, tricks, and environments. An overwhelming majority of the tricks and environments are basically just inanimate objects and tools, more like power-ups than actual plants or characters. For example, let's look at Shamrocket. Shamrocket has its own name and distinct visuals that separate it from an ordinary real-world rocket. So this should count as a new character as per our current rules. But clearly this isn't a character, it's just a bomb you can use to support your actual plant characters. This is evidenced by the fact that the game classifies tricks and environments separately to plants. For example, the Shamrocket trick is classified as a pinecone trick, while the pineclone plant is classified as a pinecone plant. For this reason, just for Plants vs Zombies Heroes, only actual plant cards will count to our total, not tricks or environments. With this in mind, there are 31 new characters in the Guardian class, 32 new characters in the Kabloom class, 28 new characters in the Mega Grow class, 34 new characters in the Smarty class, and 27 new characters in the Solar class. There were a few kind of difficult decisions I had to make though, like excluding Juggernaut from the count since it's the same character as Iron Maiden, as both look similar while not differing in purpose wildly, as proven by Juggernaut's armored trait. I included Ensign Uproot and Lieutenant Caratron, even though they're superpowers since they're the only plant superpowers that aren't tricks, but rather actual plants. I only included Hothead as part of the Guardian count, so it wasn't counted twice. As for Invasive Species, it does look exceptionally similar to the Weed character from Garden Warfare 2, but I bent the rules slightly to include it as a new character. This is because Invasive Species is actually meant to be an alien, not a weed. It's proven by its head antenna and the fact that it comes down in an aircraft, unlike the weeds which come from underground. Also, its description confirms that it isn't a weed, but aspires to be one. For what it's worth, the Plants vs Zombies wiki agrees with me here, stating that it's based on the Garden Warfare 2 weed character, but is entirely its own thing. I did count Jolly Holy as a new plant, since it functions differently to Holy Barrier and has its own name too. Another really tricky case was Sunny a Sunshroom. I ended up including it to the count because it doesn't function like a Sunshroom, has its own name, and its description even calls it Sunshroom's bigger brother, proving they're different characters. You could argue that the functional difference isn't significant, which is probably true, but I gave it the benefit of the doubt due to its description. In total, there were 160 new characters in Plants vs Zombies Heroes, which is kind of insane to think about. This game hasn't had nearly as many updates as Plants vs Zombies 2, and we didn't even count tricks and environments, yet it nearly has the same amount of new characters. Despite the fact that basically no one knows about this game, we have to take a look at it. Plants vs Zombies Match is a game that's actually live right now, but it has been a state of development limbo for years, drawing many parallels to Plants vs Zombies 3. It's actually really hard to find any significant information about this game, maybe because people don't care that much about a Match 3 game that isn't even being developed by PopCap themselves. I don't know. From what I could find, the only new characters in this game are Backpedal, Sawgrass, and Pinwheel. Backpedal and Sawgrass are from the old 3D versions of Plants vs Zombies 3, but Backpedal never made it to the game as it was scrapped in development, so this is actually the only Plants vs Zombies game it ever made it into. Sawgrass on the other hand did make it into the old Plants vs Zombies 3, which will be important later. These two characters don't actually impact the gameplay, their assets were just recycled as NPCs for the story sequence of the game, which is kinda sad. Pinwheel on the other hand was directly involved in the gameplay, but was later replaced by Starfruit. Much like Silver Sword from Plants vs Zombies 3, Pinwheel still counts, even though it was scrapped, it was a character at some point. With Plants vs Zombies match completed, we've covered every currently live Plants vs Zombies game. Well, not really, but more on that very soon. Summing up all of the game's totals gives us an impressive 541 plant characters across the board. Honestly, that was a lot more than I was expecting. In case you haven't noticed, we're not even close to being done with this video. These 541 characters are just scratching the surface of what's to come. To reach a truly objective answer to this video's question, we have to go so much deeper. Notice how I said we're done with the currently live games? Well, let's explore the lesser known discontinued games, shall we? Plants vs Zombies Adventures was a mildly obscure 2010s Facebook game, live from early 2013 to late 2014, which I'm sure was pretty cool for the two of you who played it. Needless to say, it didn't do nearly as well as the mainline games. It still contributed a fair amount of characters to the franchise though, some of which have since become recurring characters, including Fire Pea and Chili Pepper. But we're not interested in those characters, since we've already counted them as part of Plants vs Zombies 2. 
what we're really interested in are the plants that have been long forgotten since this game came out. Magnet Plant was this game's answer to Magnet Shroom, and there's clearly a case for it to be a new character since it has its own name, and visually, it's not even a mushroom anymore as it has stems and leaves like most other plants. In my opinion though, this is the same character as Magnet Shroom and won't count to the total. It still remains largely unchanged visually, functions nearly identically, and the game even accidentally calls it Magnet Shroom when you first obtain him. This is similar to how Gone Warfare accidentally calls P Repeater Repeater in some cases. Apart from that, there are 12 actually new characters in this game, and one of them is called Power Flower, not to be confused with this Power Flower or that Power Flower. Honestly, I could go on another tangent about this, but I've become desensitized to how ridiculous the naming conventions this franchise are while making this video. At least they didn't call it Toolnut Flower or something. Oh yeah, and we have one last group of plants to talk about, trees. These were a group of decorative items that you could use to decorate your base, but they could also talk like the Tree of Wisdom from the first game, giving you a line of dialogue when you clicked on them. Crazy Dave's up to no good again, I see. I don't know why talking trees are such a recurring theme in these games, well, I have my theories. But either way, these guys do count. Since there's so little information about them, it's hard to categorize them properly. All I know is that there are seven different types of trees which probably all act the same and have the same dialogue but look different. I can't find any names for them if they even had unique names at all, I can't find out if each one said specific lines of dialogue that the other ones didn't, I can't find out if the type of tree was just randomly selected or if you could buy and select which type of tree you wanted to place. Even though information about the trees is so scarce, I realize that it doesn't matter as we already have enough information to classify them. Since we know that their main purpose is decoration, their aesthetics are their functionality. We know that each tree species is significantly different aesthetically just by looking at them, which means they're also significantly different functionally since they decorate your base in different ways. This meets two criteria points, so they can be counted as new characters. This gives us five new characters. The two variants of oak tree are one character, the apple tree is a character, the orange tree is a character, the two variants of pine tree are one character, and the bacon tree is a character. Why does bacon tree exist? Uh, uh, your guess is just as good as mine. So Plants vs Zombies Adventures yields 17 new characters. Anyway, let's move on because it's kind of crazy that it took just as much time this video to classify 160 new characters in Heroes than it did to classify just 17 characters in a defunct Facebook game that lasted less than two years. Earlier in the video I said we would also count the many characters from the old Plants vs Zombies 3 versions, which is exactly what we'll do now. There are a total of 15 characters from this game that we haven't seen yet, including Aloe Vera, which is separate to Aloe from Plants vs. Zombies 2 as supported by its almanac entry. Included in this count are also two NPCs, the Star Tree and the Magic Beans, which we didn't include in Plants vs. Zombies Heroes since they were a trick, not a plant. This count also excludes Sawgrass since it was counted already in Plants vs. Zombies Match, the sole survivor of the complete annihilation of the old Plants vs. Zombies 3. With 32 new characters across these two discontinued games, our running total now reaches 573 characters. Okay, surely we're done now, right? Nope. Again, this video isn't even close to being over. Because on the other side of the world, there's this little thing called... China! Well, it's nowhere near little geographically, but it's so little in terms of my viewership that it doesn't even show up in my statistics. That would be because YouTube is banned in China. So if you're my one viewer from China watching through some crazy strong VPN, let me know in the comments. This would probably be a really great opportunity to segue into a VPN sponsorship, but this video isn't sponsored, so don't worry about double tapping 60 seconds ahead. Anyway, China has a lot of exclusive Plants vs Zombies games for some reason, and consequently a lot of exclusive plant characters. Also, if I had little knowledge about Plants vs Zombies adventures, I know basically nothing about any of the games we're going to be discussing, so let me know if I get anything wrong. My experience of Chinese Plants vs Zombies doesn't go much further than messing around with the level editor in Plants vs Zombies 2 China. Either way, this is going to be as much of an adventure for me as it is for you, so let's dive in. Despite sounding like a Chinese port of Plants vs Zombies 2, Plants vs Zombies 2 China, or 2C, is in many aspects a completely new game. It has so much more content, including new worlds, a level editor, and an actual real-time PvP mode. It's actually criminal that all of this is exclusive to China, even if the quality is less appealing than the quantity. 
For the sake of this video, we don't care about any of that stuff. What we care about is new characters, and this game definitely has us covered. I'm not going to be going into as much detail about what most of these plants are or do, but if you want to know a lot of that stuff, Flag Zombie has a very detailed series of videos covering them, which I highly suggest checking out. Let's start off with the worlds ported from the international version, then get to exclusive worlds later. The Chinese Dark Ages has one new character, Oak Archer. Big Wave Beach has an Acid Lemon and Lotus Pod. Frostbite Caves has a Riflesia and Whirlwind Acorn. Lost City has Jackfruit. Neon Mixtape Tour has Morning Glory. And Jurassic Marsh has Primal Riflesia, Dino Roar Glass. Dino or grass, Timid Thorns, and Sugarcane Master. Now, time for the exclusive worlds. Kung Fu World has Resistant Radish, Fire Gourd, Heavenly Peach, and Bamboo Shoot. Yes, this is the third new character to be called Bamboo Shoot. It looks and functions completely different to the other two bamboo shoots. Sky City has Loquat, Saucer, Horse Bean, Ground Cherry, Anthurium, I definitely butchered that, Pineapple, and Asparagus, which has nothing to do with Asparagus from Plants vs Zombies Adventures. Steam Age has Flat Shroom, Lotus Shooter, Vanilla, Maypop Mechanic, Lily of Alchemy, and Mulberry Blaster. Renaissance Age has Bearberry Mortar, Wax Gourd Guard, Oily Olive, and Jeweler Pomegranate. High End Age has six characters that I'm just going to show on screen because I'd have an aneurysm trying to pronounce all those in one take. In the Fairy Tale Forest Secret Realm has Ents, Hat Mushroom, Princess Springgrass, and Bamboo Trooper. Across all the worlds, there are a total of 42 new characters. On top of this, there are a whopping 17 new monthly special plants, which, from what I can tell, are kind of like premium plants from the international version. There are way too many of these to name them all, so I'm just going to name a few ones that piqued my interest. Namely, Bane of My Existence Bamboo, Bamboo Passport Bro, Insert Immature Joke Here, Peso Dragon, and Average American School Student. Don't forget to tip your landlord bamboo, guys. One of the monthly special plants, Pumpkin Witch, shoots mini pumpkins at zombies, which control the zombie they haunt, so it fights for you. However, this mini pumpkin also isn't given a name, and is graphically a part of the Pumpkin Witch's design, so it doesn't count. Another Chinese exclusive feature is artifacts, which are consumable items kind of like power-ups. I think. One of these arcades is the Arcade Artifact, which spawns 8-bit pea shooters. And for some reason, there's virtually no information about this plant on the internet, even more so than the trees from Adventures. But even though I can barely figure out what this thing even does, it still has its own name and visuals, so it's a new character. Tactical Cuke, on the other hand, isn't a new character. This is because it functions similarly to its appearances in other games, it's literally just a nuke, and shares the same name too. Apparently the tactical cuke in Garden Warfare was originally planned to keep the same design as this game, but later in development they decided to revamp its design, which, to be fair, was definitely the right call because the Garden Warfare design looks like an actual weapon, while this one just looks like a constipated green blob. There's also this new character called P Mech Assembler Flamestar, which is uh, definitely something. The last character we have to talk about for 2C is Rotten Red, which is a plant that was designed by an 8 year old boy named Miles while he was visiting the PopCap Studios for a Make a Wish campaign. Then over in China, the 2C devs just went, you know what, let's just make it a real plant in our game without asking for any permission, which they did. Then it was removed in the very next update for obvious reasons. That's just something you'd never expect to happen in the Plants vs Zombies universe. In total, Plants vs Zombies 2C includes 115 new characters, which is just insane to me since it's just meant to be a Chinese version of a game that already has hundreds of characters itself. Oh yeah, and one last thing. The costumes in this version actually alter the plant's functionality, unlike the international version. So you could make the case that these are their own characters. However, if you remember all the way back to the Plants vs Zombies 2 part of the video, I did add the extra rule that characters don't count if they're purely an added on boost or power up to an existing character, so none of these costumes count. Believe it or not, that's it for the fully live Chinese Plants vs Zombies games. Adding the characters from Plants vs Zombies 2C brings us up to 688 characters. You might be thinking, I thought you said there were a bunch of Chinese exclusive games, and you would be correct. But almost all of them are partially or fully discontinued and unplayable. Well, apart from an AR trading card game that doesn't have any new characters. As we dive even deeper into the discontinued Chinese Plants vs Zombies games, keep in mind that some of these games and their content have not been very well preserved. This has made researching these games very difficult, but I've tried my best to salvage as much information as I can from the fragmented mess of peculiar, strange, and downright puzzling games we're about to explore. Here we go. Plants vs Zombies Endless Edition was kind of like an expansion of the original Plants vs Zombies with more content, including, you guessed it, new plant characters. Even though it was discontinued in 2015, nearly 10 years ago, it left behind some pretty unique characters, 
including a whole new type of plant called hero plants. These were basically a set of six plants that were based around existing plants but had special abilities and could be moved around. Also, you could only use one of them per level. The hero plants were Iron Man Nut, Wukong Pea, Pig Squash, Nut Wujing, Monk Flower, and Nether Shooter. I probably butchered those two, but I don't want to download Duolingo and get harassed and gaslit by Green Owl just to make one video. There is a case for these being powered up states of existing characters and hence not being unique characters like the costumes in 2C, but these are very clearly distinct from their subject matter. You can bring both the hero and the base plant into the same level, which clearly shows they're not the same character, whereas the costumes in 2C are powered up states that you customize the base plant with. The other new characters in this game are just regular plants though, all five of which being C based for whatever reason. Strong Cauliflower is a plant in this game that is basically identical to Strong Broccoli functionally, which we already counted in 2C. The only difference is that they changed its color to white in this game to resemble a cauliflower instead of a broccoli. But I recently found out that broccoli and cauliflower are the same word in Chinese. So that means they actually don't have different names, they're the same character. Another mildly confusing case was Caratillery, which looks completely different in this game and functions pretty differently too. However, some of its functionality was preserved from 2C, including its plant food ability which is just a normal attack because there's no plant food in this game. This leads me to believe that they were just implementing the same character, but the visual and functional changes were at least partly because of the technical limitations of importing a Plants vs Zombies 2 plant into a Plants vs Zombies 1 game engine. This is supported by the fact that Caratillery belongs to the premium plant group in this game, which is basically entirely composed of other PvZ2 plants that got massacred in the transition from 2C to Endless Edition. And when I say massacred, I really mean massacred. Like, if you're telling me this is Ghost Pepper, then there should be no problem with this being Caratillery. Overall, only 11 characters came from this game, which is kind of disappointing compared to 2C, but to be expected since 2C has been updated since launch, and is still going strong like its international counterpart. Great Wall Edition was another kind of expansion of Plants vs Zombies 1. I say kind of because they didn't really add much content besides new Great Wall themed textures and zombie reskins. And apparently some of the only new actual content that was added was also added to Endless Edition anyway. If you played these games back in the day, let me know why you would ever choose to play this one because to me, it just sounds like Endless Edition with less stuff. As for new characters, there's not much really. Apparently Starfruit was replaced by a functionally identical character called Future Star. It looks different enough aesthetically and has a unique name, so I'm going to be counting it. Also, it was a promotional tie-in for a milk company of the same name. Weird, but nothing we haven't seen before and nothing we won't see again very soon in a much weirder way, trust me. There's also a new Pepper power-up, which doesn't have a name to my knowledge, but its capsicum design is unique and its ability as a power-up is unique too, so it counts. There's also a reskin of the lawnmower, which doesn't have a name either, but it still acts identically to the normal lawnmower, so it doesn't make our character count. With two new plants, we've reached a new low for plant characters in a single game, since this game narrowly beats PvZ Match, which has one more new character. Okay, if this is another Plants vs Zombies 1 clone, I'm gonna lose it. For the sake of not making this video even longer than it already is, all you need to know is that this is just Plants vs Zombies 1 with extra steps. You get the drill by now. The bulk of the new characters here are just 5 knockoff versions of existing plants, but they all comfortably meet our criteria for new character, as well as a new plant called Fire Shroom. One of these plants, Super Chomper, was another promotional plant, this time for a lactic acid drink. I'm not gonna lie, that's kinda smart, I see what they did there. Out of all the promotional plants I've done over the years, none of them have stood out to me as unplants vs zombies as this next plant, Calm Chuck. My god, this is an absolute abomination. Apparently it's a Chopper Chops crossover plant featuring the Chopper Chops mascot, which I didn't even know was a thing in the first place. Surely this takes the cake for the most obscure and strange plant in the whole franchise. I'm glad I could make this video just so I could enlighten the masses about this peak plant design. I'm not even joking, when I was researching this game and stumbled upon Calm Chuck, I actually felt violated, personally. For something that's meant to advertise Choppa Chops, this so-called plant really succeeded at making me never want to put a Choppa Chop in my mouth ever again. Also, the plant's almanac entry is about the 2012 end of the world misconception, for some reason. Okay, now that I've ended my rant on existential crisis lollipop over here, Social Edition has accumulated 7 new characters. Now let's swiftly move on, because I don't want to ever have to see or talk about that thing again. Yeah. 
Plants vs Zombies Online was an MMO web game that was, at least in terms of aesthetics, built upon Plants vs Zombies 2. Yes, we finally escaped Plants vs Zombies 1 Purgatory. Interestingly, at the time of its closure in 2018, it was the second ever Plants vs Zombies game to be shut down, only behind Plants vs Zombies Adventures. There were 12 new world plant characters in this game, with one really close call that could go either way, that being Wax Guard. The Wax Gourd Guard from 2C is supposedly based on this plant, but not the same plant, which makes sense because they have slightly different names and function completely differently. The Wax Gourd Guard was a defensive plant, while Wax Guard in this game is an instant use plant. You could say that their names are close enough, and their visuals are close enough to consider them the same, but I personally think the evidence is more compelling for calling Wax Guard a new character. It was really close though, and even the Plants vs Zombies wiki seems confused about it, as since it states Wax Gourd Guard is based on Wax Guard, but then backtracks later in the page, saying that Wax Gourd Guard is Wax Guard ported over from PZ Online. Another close call was Nitro Shroom, well, more specifically, Nitro Shroom's projectiles. Unlike the Baby Dragon Brute and the Mini Shroom, these Baby Nitro Shrooms are never actually given a name, so we don't have enough reason to call them a new character. Also, the dandelion in this game has nothing to do with the dandelion we know and love. This one looks completely different and acts more like a weird fat beat. Anyway, we're not done here, since the next group of plants are the Adventure Mode exclusive plants. Yes, the worlds in this game aren't in the Adventure Mode. You can never really tell what to expect with these Chinese games. The only new characters here are Magic Vine, Clivia, Lychee Drill, Sea Anemone, and Mine Fruit. This brings the game's total up to 17 new characters. Plants vs Zombies All Stars was a 2014 RPG spin off of Plants vs Zombies 2, which was shut down in 2020. One of the main gameplay aspects was the evolution feature. In a similar fashion to Pokemon, you could evolve your plants through evolutionary lines consisting of three plants each. These plant evolutions do count as new characters since they're not just powered up states of existing plants, but new plants entirely. Costumes in Plants vs Zombies 2 and 2C could be swapped around on your plant, proving that no actual change in character was being made, just a temporary cosmetic or powered up state. However, plant evolutions in All Stars can't be reversed, often look very different visually and have their own distinct names and distinct abilities. The fact that the evolutions can't be reversed proves that these aren't just temporary powered up states, but permanent new character transformations entirely. If you still don't believe me, some lines like the P line have multiple existing characters in them. So if you're saying each line is just one character, then P Shooter and Repeater must be one character, or Sunflower and Twin Sunflower must be one character, which simply isn't true. There are a bunch of these evolutionary lines which are all built around an existing character except for two. These two lines are the Hazelnut line and the Tree line. The Hazelnut line is built around Hazelnut, who at first glance looks like Whirlwind Acorn which we already counted in 2C. But Hazelnut isn't remotely similar to Whirlwind Acorn as it's mainly a support plant rather than an attacker and has a new name. And Pistachio has nothing to do with Pismachio from Heroes, although they do coincidentally look really similar. As for the tree line, I can't find any evidence that any of these characters aren't new original characters. The closest plants we've come across are the talking trees from Adventures, which are nothing like these guys. Anyways, as much as I like to talk about nuts and bushes all day, it's time to count these characters up. The plant lines in this game are in three categories, gentle, brave, and tenacious. The Gentle category has 6 new characters, my favourite of which is probably Triplet Sunflower which looks like it survived both Hiroshima and Nagasaki. On a more serious note though, there was actually a guy who survived both of these bombs which is just really impressive. I can't even start to imagine how absolutely traumatic that would have been. But I bet you weren't expecting to walk out of this video with a history fact were you? The Brave category has a much more significant 43 new characters, my favourites being Small Opinio because it's relatable. Moody Shroom because it looks like it inhaled a whole brick of cocaine, and Energy Bean because it looks so ridiculous that it made me realise most of this game's plants look more like fan art than official plants. Also Bomb Doom Shroom, Devil Chili and EC Peach just all look really cool. This category did have some tricky plants though. The game's Cobb Cannon could be counted as a new character because it attacks completely differently by shooting lasers and looks completely different. However, apparently it only got this redesign in an update to the game so it must be the same character with a new coat of paint. Also, the fact that it evolves from the Kernel Pult line is kind of a reference to the fact that you could only use it by evolving Kernel Pults in the original game. Both the Shadow Shroom and Maypop mechanic lines have a plant that's visually based on the original character, and a plant that looks different but is named after the original plant. This is giving me Garden Warfare naming flashbacks. 
For the Maypop Mechanic line, they renamed the actual Maypop Mechanic Maypop Researcher and gave the Maypop Mechanic name to a Maypop Mechanic with slightly longer leaves. For the Shadow Shroom line, they named the actual Shadow Shroom Sepsis Shroom and gave the Shadow Shroom name to a Shadow Shroom wearing a hat. This one is even harder to decipher because the hat is an actual costume it wears in Plants vs Zombies 2. So, how did I solve this dilemma? I didn't. No matter which opinion you have, you're probably still going to have two new plants from each line, so I just added two to the character count for each of these lines. The only case where this wouldn't work is if you think multiple plants from the same line are the same character, which doesn't make sense since they evolve from each other, have different names, look different and have different abilities. The only other difficult one was Super Bean, which looks very similar to the boss of the same name from Garden Warfare 2. All Stars and Garden Warfare 2 were in development around the same time, so it's impractical to say that one inspired the other. But what probably happened is that they were both inspired by Laser Bean's cape costume in Plants vs Zombies 2, which does draw these plants closer together. I ended up not counting the Super Bean as a new character because remove the sunglasses and you have basically the same thing. Also, this game Super Bean is shown to fly or levitate on the title screen, which is an ability it also has in Garden Warfare 2. The Tenacious category has 16 new characters. My favorites are Chainsaw Flytrap because what the f***, Walnut Bomb because what the f***, Saturn Peach Bomb because what the f***, and Diamond Spike Weed because, wow, that's actually really cool. Also, Infatool Nut should be a thing outside of China. In fact, I'm surprised the Garden Warfare devs didn't throw it in Garden Warfare and call it Infinite. This game also had some plants that were removed in later updates, kind of like Rotten Red but without plagiarizing off of a child with a life-threatening illness. These were Tropical Cannon, Magical Dragon Grass, and Lion Tail. Adding all these together gives us 65 new characters, which is way more than all of the other discontinued Chinese games combined. That's pretty impressive, even if some of them look like a 5 minute Photoshop job of an existing plant. Across all of the discontinued Chinese games, there are 102 new characters, which brings our total up to 790 overall. Okay, so we've looked at international games, cancelled games, Chinese exclusive games, Chinese exclusive cancelled games. So is this video finally done? You know the answer at this point. There's one more category of games we have to analyze, which are the most obscure games yet. However, the script for this video is already 17 pages long. And I've already spent months making this video, so I'm gonna have to call this video part one and end it here. In the next video, I'll have the final answer to this one sentence question that's genuinely consumed my life for the past three months. So make sure you don't miss it.